Sometimes for the legal analysis, you gotta call in the pros and ask them for some help. Welcome to today's bonus active self-protection lesson. I'm still your host, John Correa. Today I have a bonus lesson for you. I have invited a board certified attorney, one of the best in America, to give us some more legal analysis of one of our videos here on the channel. Now we normally post this kind of stuff on the Active Self Protection Extra channel, but it's so important, I wanted to bring it here to you as well. Hope you enjoy the analysis and it helps you in your understanding of legal use of force. So this guy's walked into Best Buy, said he wanted to buy a couple iPhones, and when the clerk put them on the counter, he stuffs them in his bag and runs out. Now you're gonna see the guy at the door run into him and now the fight is on and you can see our you know shoplifter is trying to get into his bag and the loss protection guys trying to keep him from doing that and the shoplifter is actually going to draw a pepper spray and spray the clerk and then get away cops are still looking for him you can see him one more time grab the stuff and run out now watch the LP guy try to get after him like Terry Tate office linebacker but unfortunately he's not able to do that and in the fight you can see that the LP guy is is worried about the product and holding on to the bag and the guy pulls out a pepper spray and a knife is what the news story linked in the description said but he used the pepper spray pepper sprayed the clerk and got away as far as i know cops are still looking for this bad guy and that's where this one ends today's video is brought to us by firearms legal protection firearms legal protection is a legal defense program for lawful gun owners with a 24 7 emergency hotline and plans designed specifically for self-defenders they are offering a discount on their plan to ASP fans, so hit the link in the description for that. Also want to say thanks to Wilderness Tactical for letting us have the space here to do some of these. Always appreciate their support on the channel as well. So let's talk about this. So this guy comes in, and, and I, I think I talked about it on the, the tactical level, right? Yes. Of whether it's smart to do this kind of stuff. So dude's going to run off with a couple of iPhone 11s, and he's got 2500 bucks worth of you know iPhones in his uh, bag or whatever. And our guy starts tussling with him, and out comes a knife and a pepper spray. He ends up using the pepper spray, thankfully, instead of the knife. Right. Uh, loss prevention guy runs off, and he gets away with his stuff. I don't even know if they ever caught him as far as when I did the video they hadn't. So, but talk to me about the legalities of detaining somebody who is stealing. Great question. You know, in most states, um, there's this thing called a shopkeeper's rule. What that is is basically if someone comes in and they start to steal something or they get past a certain point within the store, you can detain them. Now, that's pretty much it. You can detain them. That doesn't mean you get to use lethal force on someone. Certainly. That doesn't mean that you get to beat the hell out of them. But, but detention is physical force. Depends on where you are. Let me give you an example. I can say, hey, stop, don't go anywhere. I've just detained you. Okay. Police officers do it all the time. It's not necessarily physical force. Okay, so a detention is force, but it's maybe not even physical force. Correct. So I am imposing my will on you. I've actually seized you. And yes. what I mean by that is I now have control over you. Now, that control could just be me saying, don't move. That control could be me, um, at the high end, using a firearm, pointing it at you, saying, don't move. So, so either way, you're seized. And obviously in this case, you know, the guy starts running out and the LP guy doesn't, you know, start with verbals. He grabs a hold of the guy. So at what point am I um, legally and morally justified to use physical force? Well, again, he runs out and as I remember, he gets past the entryway there. You know, you go in Best Buy, you've got the first set of doors and then the second set. So he gets outside, and at that point, I believe he's outside the store. Yep. The shopkeeper in this case can attempt to stop him, but with what force? Because now, using that, you know, you use pepper spray or anything else, or even physical force, you now open yourself up for potential criminal and civil liability. So it seemed to me he was trying to grab the guy's bag. My stuff is in there. Right? And, and I think it's common sense that he should have the right to do that. Look, to, I know from a, uh, a legislative perspective, at least here in Arizona, that it says, listen, to stop the theft of property, that it's reasonable to use physical force to stop property, but not deadly force unless there's loss of life that is imminent. Sure. So that seems to be the, the reasonable standard, right? I can use the reasonable amount of force necessary to keep somebody from stealing my stuff. So let me ask this, what if the shopkeeper had broken 
the perpetrator's arm. That starts to be, is that reasonable? What if Yeah, what the, if he breaks his nose by punching him in the face? What if he threw him to the ground and he broke his, his collarbone or something at that point? So now it gets into this whole gray area because, again, if I'm the perpetrator, first thing I'm thinking of is I think I might just sue these people. Yeah, and that's so now we got a civil thing on our hands. Now, I think from a criminal perspective, even from a civil perspective, well, you don't want to get your shoulder broken? Don't steal other people's stuff, right? You know, Correct. And, and I think hopefully as Correct. a society we say, well, if you didn't want those consequences, then you shouldn't have taken things to begin with. And when he said, no, you can't do that, you should have given it back and gone about your merry way and get a job, you loser. I, I agree with you, but let's look at how, at how our society is. I mean, ever go to McDonald's and say, hey, give me a cup of hot coffee. Yeah. Is it too hot? What's too hot? You know? Um, and that's why, remember, behind every stupid sign, there's an idiot, right? You know, caution, hot coffee. Of course it's hot coffee. That's what I asked for, for gracious sake. Exactly. I mean, in this case, the, the, if it were me, I would be very cautious. I would try and stop the person, maybe not with physical force. That's probably why I'm, you know, not in security. But, right, right. Uh, as they run away, let them go away. Because, again, I don't know what this perpetrator has. I don't know if he's got a knife, a gun. If you're willing to come into a store and steal $2,500 worth of iPhones, you're probably willing to do anything else to me to get away or, or what yeah. have you. Well, and so, I mean, obviously, from a tactical perspective, I think that makes good sense. You know, am I, am I willing to get knifed over an iPhone? I'm not, personally. I'm not either. Yeah. So that seems silly. But uh, from a legal perspective, can you reasonably use force? Well, it depends on the jurisdiction you're in and what they, they expect. What about as a bystander? Does that change when you're not the shopkeeper? It actually does, uh, quite honestly, because, again, you have no duty to do anything. You haven't been empowered to do anything. So if someone's running down the street and I hear, hey, stop, you know, they just stole these iPhones. Now, the question becomes, are they a fleeing felon? Because right. someone out here is going to say, well, they're a fleeing felon. I get to use force. All right, you Texans. Texas Penal Code <laughs> 9.42 exists, and it's weird, and it's unique. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Don't get me going with that one. Um but the question becomes, at what level do you get involved? Right. Because, again, it's property. And, and you mentioned Texas. You know, one thing in Texas, and, and I hear this all the time, about using lethal force to protect property. Very few states allow that. In Texas, you can. However, there's a big, big however with the state of Texas. Be very careful. Be careful because you, if the property is being taken, it has to be something that cannot be replaced. And cannot be recovered by other means. And for example, if you steal my great-grandmother's ashes and you're running down the street, that might be an example of when I yeah. can use lethal force So be in careful. Texas. Yes. So I guess where, where it boils down to is, you know, do you have some rights to use physical force to defend your property? You do, and it depends on the state. But be cautious, because guess what? Uh, that doesn't protect you from civil actions. And do that people bring goofy civil actions all the time? And can you get punished with that process? Yeah, I think you can. It becomes expensive, and you know what happens? Someone looks at this and says, oh, this is stupid. They throw the uh, summons and complaint away, and next thing you know, they're in debt for about fifty thousand dollars because they never answered. They never answered it. Yeah, and and you know, so in my opinion, if you're in loss prevention, if you are in, you know, even this as the shopkeeper, far better to prevent these kinds of things than have a wrestling contest with a perp over an iPhone. Uh, from a tactical perspective, and and even from a, a civil liability perspective, if you were to break his arm or something like that. You could be in trouble. So, yeah, Terry, appreciate the knowledge. Thank you.